What's up everyone? This is Beast Boy and welcome to another video in the Versus Style Finance for the Youth series. If you missed last week's video, you can click up to the top right corner and check it out. So for today's topic, we're going to talk about checkings accounts, savings accounts, and how you use them. So let's get right into it. For those of you who are just entering the workforce, maybe you got your first job, you might be getting paid with a check. So when you have a check, what do you do with it? How do you get your money? What you're gonna do is you're gonna take it to your local banking institution, whichever institution you want, and you're gonna open a checking account. So this account is basically a cash deposit account that keeps all of your money safe so you don't have to carry a bunch of cash around. Money, money, money. <laughs> because obviously that's not safe, right? So when you open a checking account, the maximum amount of money that you can withdraw or use from that account is the same as the maximum amount of money that you have deposited in that account. So for example, if you got a check for $800, you put it into your checking account, then when you want to go and purchase something, you cannot use more than $800 because that is the maximum amount allowed that you have in your account. When you have a checking account, you want to make sure that you do not withdraw more money than you have deposited in that account. What happens is if you take out too much money, either your transaction will be denied at the store, which can be one, embarrassing, but two, show you that you have no more money left in your account. But also, if that transaction does happen to be pulled out, the bank will charge you an overdraft fee, which could range from 25 to $35, and you don't wanna to have to pay an additional fee for the money that you don't have, yeah? So make sure that when you are using your checking account, you keep your budgets right so you know how much money you have in your account and how much you have to spend. Usually, when you open a checking account, you're also gonna be issued a debit card. So when you get this little plastic debit card, that is essentially a cash card. All that money that you have access to on your debit card is the exact same amount of money that is in your checking account. So if you want to purchase something online or you want to purchase something without cash, a debit card is what you want to use. But again, just like everything else, you want to make sure you budget correctly so you know that you are spending the right amount of money that you can afford. Now, with a debit card, if you want to actually take out cash and pay for something with cash, a debit card gives you access to ATMs. You can go to a lot of local ATMs. Usually your banks have their own ATMs or they have ATMs that they partner with called qualifying ATMs. That means that when you go to the ATM, you can take out your cash for free. If you happen to not go to a qualifying ATM, they may charge you a two to $3 fee. So as much as you can, you want to avoid going to non-qualifying ATMs. So make sure every time you have a checking account and a debit card, you check which ATMs you can go to for free. Now, a savings account is a little bit different. A savings account is just that, an account for saving your money. So this isn't money that you always want to access easily in the way a checking account is. Instead, this is an account where you want to slowly grow it every month after you get your paycheck. Good practice is to put away five to 10% of each paycheck into a savings account automatically, or if you prefer, manually. If you do have direct deposit with any of your jobs, you can sign up and do it in a way where every time you get a paycheck issued, they can put most of the money into your checking account for easy access, and then they'll put some of it away into your savings account. So you can literally mark that five to 10% that you want to be put away every month with your direct deposit. If not, you just have to do it yourself manually. Now, to calculate what that five to 10% would be for you, Basically, you have to take the amount of your paycheck. So let's say we go back to the previous example of $800. Let's say I want to only save 5% every single time I get an $800 paycheck. I'm going to multiply that 800 by the decimal 0.05. So just a little bit of math here. Um, you have to kind of understand percentage conversions to decimals, which you can you know read up on and then do a little practice on yourself. But for the most part, it's pretty simple. It'd be 800 times 0.05. And what that number will be is how much you want to save after every paycheck. In this case, that's $40. So 
So every time you get that $800 paycheck, you want to make sure you put $40 away into your savings and you do not touch it. Yeah. So for you, really, all you have access to is $760. And this is a good practice to adopt to build your savings account. One thing that you do want to be careful about with a saving account is your transfer fees. Again, the point of a saving account is not an account where you want to just easily pull out money all the time whenever you need it. You want to try to budget just so you can just use whatever is in your checking account and not touch your savings account at all. So what happens with a savings account is usually most institutions only allow you a couple of amount of transfers out of that account per month. The average is around three transfers per month. So let's say you're a little bit short on money, it's an emergency, you could maybe transfer up to three times from your savings account and put money back into your checking account so you can use it. Because your debit card will not use the money that's directly in your savings account. It will only use the money that's in your checking account. But let's say you go past that three transfers and you just get transferring, transferring, transferring every time you need money, then the bank's gonna start charging you fees for every time you transfer. So imagine every time you transfer $40 out, the bank takes 15. So really all you have left is $25. You don't actually get that $40 that you meant to transfer out. So make sure that you're always careful about this and try not to touch your savings account as much as you can. All right, y'all, so that is it for today's video. I hope you learned a little bit of something about checkings accounts, savings accounts, and how to properly use your debit card. So if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. It really helps us out a lot. And also stay tuned for future finance videos along with a bunch of other videos that Versus Style Dance Company will be releasing on this channel. Please make sure you also follow us on social media at Versus Style LA on Facebook and Instagram. And if you want, you can follow me at Beast Boy, the Hype God on Instagram. But until the next time, peace and love and catch you in the next video.